we go. So Danny, Solis. Tammy. Is a notable oh. poet who has, uh, in my estimation, really um, left some great huellas or footprints around the nation uh, based on all the places you've lived and traveled and um, spoken your word and shared your poetry. Um, so do you want to expand on that as a bio or do you want to go right into the work? Well, I just, you know, I want to say thank you, first of all, for thinking of me for this. And thanks to everybody for being here. And I just, you know, I feel really lucky that I've had the opportunities that I've had to do things and to, to try to create something that's meaningful, not just for me, but sometimes for other people. And that's, that's, I don't know, that's really it. I just, you know, I've, I, I do a lot of different stuff. I work with kids and I perform and I teach and I, you know, I'm working on a novel. Who's not though? Oh, everyone who's working on a screenplay. That's who's not working on a novel. Uh, I, I would like to ask for a favor from everyone. If you could think about it and give me two words, because I'm going to try and improv a little bit later in my set. So if anybody's got two words right away, I'll take them. But otherwise, you can give me two words after I do a poem or something. Sounds good. OK. Anybody got the words yet? No? Do you want them in the chat, or do you want us to just speak them out loud to you? Just, just speak them. I'm going to write them down. Purple. Purple. OK, there's one. Traverse. Right. I like traverse. Traverse. OK. And Pizzazz. Did you what? Pizzazz. Sass. I thought I didn't hear the first S there. No, I think, did you I say, gonna, I think she said pizzazz. something. Oh, pizzazz. All I heard, all I heard the first time was ass. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, it's gonna be like that, huh? All right. <laughs> so I've got purple, traverse, and pizzazz. A bunch of wonderful two-syllable words. Uh, if, if nobody wants to give another one right now, that's fine. And A we'll tangential. Just... Tangential. Those are your two. Yeah, I like Tangent. two words. I'll stop now. <laughs> that's okay. Well, Tammy's getting checked off the list. Used up your two-word quotient for the day. Um, so, if, Tammy, also, if you would help me keep time. So that way I don't go like, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful of everyone. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. So, so y'all, in two days, on April 6th, it will be the 30-year anniversary that I moved from Texas to Boston. And that journey, I, I was on a Greyhound for 46 and a half hours. That journey changed my life forever. And it, in Boston, I, I got my poetry life changed. And, my personal life and, and everything. So um, I want to read up a, a poem about that journey because 30 years, wow, that was crazy time. This poem is called Only Survival. Every time I enter one of these big city bus stations, I feel a little more mad, a little more driven. There is something inside me that has been and stays broken and the scraping together of the pieces is hard to deal with. I look at the dull waiting faces, faces that know only survival, and I think I am no better, only perhaps a little madder. And I don't know where anyone's going or what any of this means, except that it's sometimes too difficult to walk through a room of distorted mirrors. So I go outside the station and stand in the sun and drink wine and wait. You don't have to applaud, but you can if you like. I, can. I was like snapping, but I was muted. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> muted snapping, that's like far away from the, <laughs> the world of applause. Um, Okay, I'm, I don't really have a set list, so I'm just kind of flipping through stuff. Okay, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this 
I'm going to uh, perform a poem. It's an old poem. I'm do is anybody doing the 30 for 30 or trying to? I'm late on it, but I'd like to. Oh, wait, That's what okay. is it? It's a, a, a poem, poem a day? for the month of April. Okay. So 30, 30 days, 30 poems, because it's National Poetry Month. Okay. So and it can be fun, but it can also be a pain in the ass. I've never actually done 30 for 30, but I've tried many times. And I've gotten up to like 23, and then I'm like, fuck it. So, uh, <laughs> 23 is good, though. <laughs> tw uh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just going to do this poem. Uh, it's an old one, but I, I like doing it. The day twisted inside its 24-hour skin on its afternoon, evening bones, like a lost word or a fragmented memory must, in its incompleteness, remind itself of its own stray dog. Stone and shoe existence happening in an odd jittery dance, hopping on a stench tap of corn, a random comment of a mad derelict making your brief walk for a coffee or a movie, another consideration of the multiple fucked up unfolding of this 50 cent city drama, concrete comedy sack of bones and blood and breath wuffing itself along in jagged shuffle just out of your view, the grimy hand outstretched for coin, the fingers you don't want to touch and it's there, right there. That little song that says, what of that one? Storybook left out in the rain, the colors blur, stick together, swollen and steaming in the sun. It was, it was. Sing songs a bum on a balcony, breaking the starched afternoon boredom with his booze breast bellowing, brandishing his bottle like a glassy glinting banner. And the normal people in the shops on the buses seem less real, more remote, methodically chopping off pieces of themselves according to an agreed upon plan. Four walls, three meals, two weeks vacation, disposable income, entertainment. And I know enough of that bargained ballad that sighs and chases its tail. And I was too slow to stop the pipe light in the hallway, kid with his face split open, blood splattered everywhere. And this is just one day writhing on its rack of sky and sunlight. My bones cracking like ice cubes popping out of their tray in this crazed arena as I dodge the mire of bitterness. You can toss me in the lake, but you can't make me drink. And my girlfriend says, I just want to know where I'm going with my life. And she's going where this whole parade is headed. Lemmings, an apt metaphor, though they are less noisy and self-involved than all of us. And the evening shakes like a great wet bear, spraying stars into the gloaming blue. And the sun reaches a finger in an improbable curve through the clouds and over the hip of nighttime. And there, in the day's departing spotlight, a dragonfly vibrating, drinking up enough heat and light to last till dawn. Wings shimmer and flick. He has eyes and guts and breath and legs, his heart pounding, pounding pounding tiny engine better than the ocean in his blue black armor and if i can draw breath in the sun's next gaudy big side arrival i will scan the air for you tomorrow ah oh wow maracas all right i love it i've got, <laughs> I've got so many noisemakers y'all and drums and stuff. Oh, go get one. Um, I'm gonna, what was that yep. line? Uh, the gra dragonfly gathers the the heat of the sun. Enough heat and light to last till dawn. Yeah. Nice, nice. I really okay. Hey, I will. I will grab a drum. If you, if you tempt me, I will do it. Please that. Um, um, the analogy of pack of bones in reference to, I think, like a civilization. The, I'm sorry, say it again. Oh, 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 I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm talking. Um, I, I, I said, uh, um, I wrote down that analogy you made about pack of bones, I think, in reference to like a civilization. Um, um, it sounded like I thought it was really poignant. I, just wrote, I, I don't know, I just wrote, wrote it down. I, I thought I've never um, thought about um, the sack of bones as a as a place where like we live. Yeah. Mm. Danny, sack can I? Ask? Yes, go ahead, Tammy. 
Were you going to make a point about sack of bones? No, I was afraid I like it. No point. Yeah, yeah, that's what phrases do. They kind of hit us in different ways for different reasons. Um, so just to give some geographical context, I know you mentioned Texas and uh, Boston, um, Denny, but do you mind sharing where you're staying or working, living, being? I'm right living, no, I don't mind. I'm living in Minnesota. I'm in Rochester, Minnesota, which ah. nobody knows where that's at if you're not from Minnesota. It's about an hour and a half southeast of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Like southeast, did I say southeast or just east? Anyway, southeast. Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. All right. Not that I'm driving out there tomorrow, but it's good to know which direction. Come on, Tammy. You got a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so can you uh, hit us with one more, Danny? Yes, yes. That's my, uh, that's my conga. I got some really nice gong bops a, a little while ago. Uh, nice. I'm a, I'm a conga player, so um, I don't know if I'll have time to do the the improv. Maybe later if there's time and people can stay up. I wanted I want to do this one, and I want to I wanted to close with this one and dedicate it to the poets tonight. Everybody reading and out there creating art. And uh, I wrote this I don't know a couple of years ago, but it seems to fit the moment. Throwing flowers into the abyss planting seeds in the darkness, we sing beneath the shadow of the burgeoning storm. Electric words crackle through the night. We rise, we push back, we beat drums, hatchets, sunflowers. We begin symphonies, we overture, we a simple list of possibilities lag between probable and oracle. We gist, essence, endurance, we sift sand and mud to clay and stone, hips and shoulders, foundational fast anchor, never to see the pinnacle. We be caterwaul, ululation and grito, onslaught of wisteria, stumble, start, stack, rumble, jumbe, conga, bata, shekere, agogo, solid verse, hammer and wrist. We be dream of great, great, great grandmothers made breath an unswervable intention. We be anvil for dreams to be hammered, red hot and glowing. We be sandhill crane in field of green chiles. Be the strength plucked from sleep stories, long gray hair brushed out over and over and all those violins that remind us of all the strength that lifts us over and over. And we never, and we never, and we never drop the mic, we place it back carefully in the stand for the next voice, or even better, hand it to the next song, the next woman, the next poem that will speak out and light up the darkness. <laughs> what the heck was that, Tamitha? Was that a it flower? It's a sifter. It looks like a flower sifter. <laughs> yeah, it got oh a little God. rusty, and we have a uh, we have a song called Spaggle Sifter, so I use it in that. Okay. Yeah. I want one of those so bad. Like my mom had one, and when I bake, my flour is always too heavy. It's not full of air. It's like you know what I mean. It's unsifted, so the stuff I bake comes out. Oh, here's a brick. Get some butter. <laughs> Anyway, thanks. Thanks, everybody. I can't wait to hear everybody else. Beautiful. I put my two poems, I mean, my two words in the chat. You got two words? I put them in the chat. I think they're... Oh, okay. Twilight and Corporeal. Oh, okay. I'm saying that right. One of my students likes to say Corporeal, and so I'm like, oh, y'all are smarter than me. <laughs> I always said uh, Corporeal, but maybe I'm wrong, or y'all. Yeah. Hi, Donna. Welcome. Um, so, hey. Our next uh, poet up, because we're going in reverse um, alphabetical order. And thanks again, Danny. Don't go away. Hope you don't go to bed before we end tonight so we can give you a nice uh, lullaby, maybe.
I might just fall asleep. You know? Hey, what does that mean? Hey. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It means I'm old is what it means. Keep drinking. Yes. <laughs> Up next, we have Lynn Lewis, who um, uh, is geographically probably the closest to me. Um, uh, I guess down the street. Yeah, around the around, around the corner. And uh, I got to see you just a few days ago up at the Kroger grocery store, which is a nice treat. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. So um, I posted some info on the Facebook event page about each of the featured poets. I don't know if you had a chance to read about um, Lynn. And did I even, oh, I, I don't know if I got to put yours on, Lynn. But do I, you mind I, giving us oh, some Biographical background on your uh, on your poetic work, your publications, etc. Uh, let's see. Um, I've got a book. Um, I got a book. <laughs> hey. um, <laughs> and it's mostly has to do with my. I live here in Fort Worth, but I was raised on a farm up in Northeast Texas up in the serious, serious woods. Um, and I was lived with my grandparents for most of that time. Um, and the community is only about three miles wide. And the book that I have um, is based on a lot of that, my childhood there. And well, I've got 10 poems um, that I may be able to get done in the 10 minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and give my two words now, if I can. Yes, please. My two words are two words. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, the first poem I'm working on today is my mother's birthday. And so I'm going to read this one. It's a tribute to her, my grandmothers, my great grandmothers, my great great grandmothers, my aunts, all of the females that came before me. Um, and the title is Lineage. I come from women who soak their pinto beans overnight. Mama, grandmother, great grandma, meet in my kitchen when the pot is seasoned right and I grease my skillet for cornbread. The smells and sounds have a hundred year old memory. Man, this is a pot of beans. Okay, the second one um, came from, this poem was based on a conversation I had with a friend of mine named Carol. Um, and we were talking about our mothers, speaking of mothers, um, about the things that they had done like the week before, and we can't believe that they did this, and we can't believe they did that. And Carol made a quote that says, you know, no matter what we do, we can't make our mothers behave. So I filed that away. <laughs> And I wrote this poem, and when I, after I finished writing it, I called her and read it to her, and she started crying and said, I'm not talking to you ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carol, I hope you're listening, because this one's for you, sweetheart. It's called Carol Jean. How did we wind up looking like our mamas, who look like their mamas? You know, these women folk who inhaled dreams and landscapes by the lungs full and pushed us out into it with only as she needs and a promise. Mm. And poem number three um, has to do with one reason that I used to get up at 11 o'clock at night and still eat. Um, this was a habit that my grandfather kind of gave me. And it's called um, Kitchen Arithmetic. Gather round as we justify the math and the late night hour. Here in this kitchen, we have one man balancing the daily grief of a past wife life with the gifted presence of a new wife life. To this, we add one granddaughter barely tall enough to climb into the chair as he sets a bowl in front of her. She's well acquainted with grief herself but her plight makes room for detractors and unbelievers. This gives us two pilgriming souls, one tinier than the other, 
crossing paths after a long, long day of existing, exchanging sleep for two bowls of buttermilk, we have cows to feed in a few hours, cornbread, grandmother always made cornbread, and sugar, baby girl inherited her big daddy's sweet tooth, and making a mutual silent promise to see about it all again tomorrow. Mm. Amen. Mm. Yes, dear. I just realized either, let's see, the days are blurring. It might have been last night I, that the one thing I'm really craving right now is cornbread. Mm -hmm. So if you could send me a really simple recipe uh, sometime this week, uh, that, that would be nice. I got you. Yeah. You're no a baker. Problem. Yes, You bake a lot, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I know that about you. I'll get you that recipe. All right. All right. And this one is called When Miss Gracie Had to Be Someplace Else Than Here. And Miss Gracie is one of the elders of our community. Um, she was close to 100 years old when she died, and it was um, in a house fire. But her son and my grandfather were best friends. And so I wrote this about Miss Gracie leading up to the day of her funeral. And it's called When Miss Gracie Had to Be Someplace Else Than Here. Uh. Mama said that it always rains hard when the old people die. When Miss Gracie had to be someplace else than here, sand and red clay dirt sucked up rainwater for three whole days, and the cemetery ground held its peace when it was split wide open to take Miss Gracie back home. She said that it snowed on the August day that saw her into this world, but Miss Gracie's only living witness is the sand and red clay dirt that keeps her company. And it's raining again. Mm. Thank you. Okay, next we have, um, this was a, uh, based off of a conversation with my brother. He had sent me a Christmas card, it has to do with um, a woman on the cover is telling Santa how good she was. And on the inside he wrote, good being relative, of course. So I filed it away and came up with this poem called, um, and it's based on another incident. It's called The Relative Relatives. The relative relatives earn their place at holiday dinners, birthday parties, anniversary receptions, weddings, christenings, funerals, Easter egg hunts, and God bless her Aunt Maud's tea parties, all because DNA testing chose to err on the side of caution. And <laughs> we talked about Aunt Maud in the previous poem. We'll talk about Aunt Maud some more because she has a fan club. Uh, it's called Defining Maud. Maud Alice Victoria can be defined by her collection of delicately labeled mason jars currently sitting in her curio cabinet and half filled with dirt from the graves of those she held dearly and those whose departure she thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> you love your family so much. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying to find, okay, let's see, number seven. Okay. I got to find that poem. Oh, this one's about writing poetry and it's called Big Plans. I think I'd like to take some words and see if they'd go better with either melted butter or a tarragon sauce. But maybe I could get away with using just a simple little marinade before applying them to the page. Mmm. Mmm. Tarragon and butter, yum. <laughs> and we find this other one. This poem is called Gate Crashing. It has to do with a woman who is at the pearly gates, about to have a conversation with St. Peter. Health gate crashing. Cora Mae Llewellyn has designs on breezing through the pearly gates, despite her dishwater history of bullet hole confessions 
and broken glass revelings without invitation spoken or engraved. None of her other departed partners in vice can name heaven as their permanent address, but with a knowing spritz of Chanel number no. five and an unholy sense of entitlement, Cora leans over and whispers to dear old St. Peter that she could really use a change of scenery, <laughs> leaving heavenly cherry lipstick on his ear. <laughs> That's yeah. one bad girl. One bad girl. <laughs> okay, this one has to do with writing poetry or inspiration. And it's called, oh, so that's how it's done. Mm -hmm. Oh my, a wicked, wicked, wicked little poem just laid down on the pillow beside me. He's dotted all his eyes crossed all his T's and oiled on enough charm to ease his way past all the girls who work late nights at spell check. He swears on a stack of anthologies that I'll still respect them in the morning. And now he's reaching for my pencil. Well, maybe just this one time. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what a date. <laughs> and the last poem, um, it's called, um, it's the last poem in my book, and it's called The Ghost of Autumn Past. Then we go back to my upbringing. The Ghost of Autumn Past. While surrounded by bricks and concrete at a bus stop downtown and enduring the labor pangs of the city's first truly genuine cold front, you realize that your heart is buried beneath a pine tree colored hill that once grew your big daddy's watermelons and it knows that it's way too soon to kill hogs, but we'll still need a fire tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amy. What's the name of your book, Lynn, and how could people get copies of it? It is on Amazon. Um, used to be Create Space, what's it called now? Something else, but um, <laughs> Like, yep, that's my family right there. Um, the title of the book is called Somewhere to Come From Just This Side of Paradise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey Lynn. Yes. Can I ask you where in East Texas? Cass County. We are due north of Caddo Lake in between I-30 and I-20. Our TV stations come out of Shreveport. <laughs> Um, let's see. High school I went to is called Atlanta High School. It's a 3A school up in Cass County. Um, we're like across the pasture from Louisiana, a little right. bit further away from Arkansas, but we're up in the, what they call the Arklatex. So we're, where we are, where I was, where my family still is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your father east, um, being from Dallas, I had a relative who had a place out uh, close to commerce, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're farther east yep. in, in good, a good piece. Yeah, it was like between commerce and Greenville out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really, it can be really pretty out there. Yeah, it can be, yep. I was just curious, thank you. <laughs> I'll let you. Um, yeah, Piney Woods is what Gwen wrote. Piney yep. Woods, East Texas. I've been out to Marshall. Yep. At that area. Because I have family that lives there too. Well, they're all over that place, but yep. And we're like due north of Marshall. Wow. Great. So um, I'm going to uh, ask our next poet to uh, tell us if, if you're ready, Tamitha. You ready to give us some poems now? Um, do I need to unmute your mic? I'm next. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I'm next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I was just running to the restroom, but it's not, it's not a big deal. I have a, a teacher bladder, so no big deal. <laughs> oh, do you need to, we can yeah. have some time if you know. Okay. Totally fine. Really. My bladder is like... Um, so I recently, I did, um, a performance with a group of, 
um, poets called uh, Tejana Cosmica. Um, as a growing up being both white and Mexican. And I've just actually learned to say both white and Mexican American instead of half. Uh, like in the last three years, I think I've started saying that. I heard it at a at another performance, actually. Um, I heard another performer say it. And so it was really kind of exploring all the different ways or the different mean ways to be Tejana, like what that means. Uh, if I could claim that, uh, I remember one time uh, at a performance with Tammy and Austin, um, <laughs> we sat down and we, it wasn't a game. It, it sounded like I said it the wrong way. And then we kind of made it funny. And I was like, well, what kind of Mexican are you? Like, I wasn't, it sounds like, <laughs> like a mean thing to say, but I was actually saying like how, is your family Mexican American? Like, you know, how many generations? Anyway, so like, this was like long before I ever really began to understand how cruel people still were <laughs> about those kinds of things. And so I was pretty mm -hmm. naive. Tammy's been with me for a, a long journey of na uh, naiveness and she's been very kind to me <laughs> during the process. Um, okay. <clears throat> this is called, and I'm, again, sometimes I think I'm saying the word properly. I'm, I've never heard anyone else say it. I've only read it. So, uh, Shimera, Shimera, yeah. Chimera. Uh, Tamitha, can I just say, interject something? Yeah. You're, you're leaning in now, and now your voice is breaking up, which was odd okay. because when you were sitting back, you weren't break, your words weren't breaking up. Okay, do so, I sound okay now? Why don't we, why don't we um, ask somebody else what they're experiencing? Lean, lean forward again and just talk about yourself or something. Hello. And so I have three kids that are grown and one's here uh, sheltering in place from LA and the other one lives with me because he has a disability. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work. You can, yeah, you go ahead and lean in because it's um, more intimate and yeah, I like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I think it's Chimera. Thank you. Okay. I looked it up and I didn't say it in the performance and then suddenly I just forgot how to say it. Okay, come here. If you are torn, I am torn too. You wail, my throat hurts, my ribs ache. You fast and I hunger, I thirst. You gnash your teeth and I chip my tooth. What are we but flesh and bone finding a home in the same cosmic heart? Monday at the Circle K. I'm hanging on a tree trying to stretch my limbs. Young Miss says you can, but dad, I know I am destined to be a chubby Mexican in a sea of live hillbillies. I get a dollar from grandpa who just got home in his white painting clothes that remind me a lot of what he wore in the state penitentiary, where he learned to knit. I think I lost that scarf in the last move or the one before or the one before. It was itchy, but warm. We all get our dollars from him and head to the Circle K where we place our quarters on the Pac-Man or Dig Dug. Whatever happens to be working, we share our sour apple hubba bubba and a Coke. The hairs on my neck are extra curly with sweat and I am glad for the wobbly ceiling fan. I slide in my quarter, push two player, and let my cousin go first. Aren't we? Thank you. We were gonna make kites from grocery store bags, fly fast down snowy mountains, catch fish bigger than us, munch on strawberries we stole from Ree's garden, eat snow ice cream and hold hands while we fell asleep, weren't we? We were gonna swing until we were dizzy and play football at every holiday and raise chickens, but only eat their eggs and have babies, lots of them, and name them made up names, weren't we? We were gonna play spoons till our fingers bled, dance on picnic tables in our cutoffs, and smear our faces with lightning bug dust to pretend our Indian blood glowed, weren't we? We were gonna get nerd tattoos, drink pomegranate wine we made ourselves, lick salt off of our wrists before we snuck a sip of our mama's beer and find out that rainbows end at the base of our spine, weren't we? We were going to ride waves that cross time zones and speak languages that only we understood, wrap ourselves in ribbon, dip our bodies in batter, and bake out on the lawn, and keep hoping that our blood would not be trapped forever until someone came along and said, 
I'll take that one. And someone else came around and said, I'll have that one. And something else came along and said, that one's mine. And then we know we have to let go, wouldn't we? Mm, wow. That's for my cousins too. Wow. Mm. Brown boys. For Christopher Gomez, Homer Cruz, Jose Lopez, Chris Fuentes, Manuel Jesus Salazar, Victor Ruiz, Jeremy Armante, Armando Oguin, Roberto Aguilar, and Chris Curiel. For what the world does to you before you're 15 that makes it hard to know you. I'm waiting to bust a U-turn when you pull up in a royal blue Pontiac with lifters. I can't see around you and don't want to. It's magic hour and Chivo might as well be our cinematographer. Your top gun sunglasses match the color of your car. Superhero wheels spin on and on, glinting sun sparks on the street like a real life comic book. No shirt, your chest just defined and golden. You turn into your neighborhood, red brick and siding. The dirt is swept smooth. And I wonder, what's your mom making for dinner? Is there a clean white shirt in your back seat? What songs on the radio, Tejano, rap, reggaeton? Who's the girl kissing the salt off your back at the park and where'd you meet? Communion, the white wafer, a moon on your tongue. Math class, the chalk dust, a cosine in your lungs. Who are the friends laughing with you after the game? Is it basketball, soccer, football, and what position? Is your mom making your favorite for dinner magic from sacks on the shelf? What do your dad's hands feel like when he comes in late from work and touches your forehead when he thinks you're asleep? The fan in the window, the glow from the street light, the sound of his hungry humming. I wanna read your story on the page. I wanna see it on the screen so everyone can know a brown boy's life, understand what a treasure you are. And so you can know it too. Mm. Beautiful. How many more should I do? Hundred. Love it, love it. Is yeah, what? Do another. Okay. I have two more short ones. Yes, both, both. Then sure. This is called unheard. I happen to have a son. My older son has a disability, and uh, this was included in in the work, but it was written after a deaf a deaf man was shot by a police officer in Oklahoma. Tonight I water the lawn in my bare feet and a smock like my grandmother's Mexican Apache German Chickasaw, eight to 10 kids and extras, bread, bread, gravy, tortillas, beans, pockets for a cuarinita and a shaker of salt. I pray for my sons and yours, the ones with the bad tempers and the ones who are slow to speak. Some ground is lush under my cool heels and others the crunchy grass stabs my toes. That sun always picking and choosing. That rain playing church games, floods swell, fires burn. But I'm not returning to the earth tonight. Water wand in hand, warm fire inside. Am I the danger? Hoping I'd rather suffer the mistake than cause the harm. This ache stretches into a slow moan. The dirt and I we recognize and cry ancient. Ears tuned to the blood of the unheard. Mm, wow. Well, can you repeat that line about the sun chooses something? That sun always picking and choosing. Yeah. That rain playing church games. Flood swell, fires burn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this I wrote uh, also in the Tejana Cosmica. We did a we partnered with a Care for Your Neighborhood, Care for Your Hood, and people did workshops based on their program, which it's a really, I, I it, it really changed the way I think about wanting to do poetry workshops, really anchoring you to the earth and to your ancestors. Um, this is also a process that has opened my eyes to things. <laughs> um, can you share, Tamitha, what part of um, Dallas you're, you're referring to? Oh, I, so I'm from Pleasant Grove, which is Southeast Dallas. It seems kind of like another, it used to be an its a own city and then it got annexed. And so it, it's sometimes it's, I always say it's like a 
there, there is a federal forest, preserve, so we're like through there, you have to go over the river and through the woods if you live in Oak Cliff to get to us. <laughs> um, but it's, really? it's an interesting little section of Dallas. It often is incredibly ignored. <laughs> some parts of it feel really rural and some parts of it feel really urban. And so there's just this, you know, it's just interesting to me. And I, it's, it's just a lot of rich life going on here that a lot of people don't know about. So. Um, Amma, I still see the trees through your screen door. Waking up on the back porch in the beanbag, my temporary bed. A quick turn of my head and there you are, leaning against the kitchen sink in your house coat, staring into the backyard, just like me. But there's a warning behind your eyes, one you tuck away when you catch my eyes seeing yours. As if to say, don't end up like me. Don't end up like me. Don't end up like me. But then you make a funny face and click the fire on the cooktop to fry me an egg. I'm waiting for Pop to step into the frame, all business, one foot on the stoop, surveying the land we will have to give up one day to the hunts. And later on, after being tacos, I'll sleep again, but this time on the side of Pop's bed, with one eye on Godzilla or King Kong on your postage stamp size black and white TV. And Pop will laugh when I jump. I'll laugh like an old dog barking, hoo, hoo, hoo. A sing-song laugh to remind me, remember me, remember me, remember me. Thank you. <laughs> it's so long since I'd heard you. It's just great. We don't live that far away. It's been weird. <laughs> I don't have a car. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and I so once I started teaching again, I got like, <laughs> Aw, make that face again. <laughs> I have to, I'm not great with work-life balance, but I am working on it. Um, Are you teaching online? I am right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely, like, and all day, like, well, except for my planning periods, but we are not doing the 15 minutes and uh, the packets. Not, not to say that there's anything wrong with that. It's just my eyeballs are like, you know, I have to get those blue blocking screens. <laughs> hey, hey, Tamita. Yes, sir. Yes. I, I, hi, hi. Um, you just call me Danny. You know, it's like all this stuff. Sorry, it's a habit. Yes, hey, sir. I'm really old, but it, my I grandma. My I say that to everybody, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, my, my mom's mom had her place with her husband in Pleasant Grove. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I'm familiar with, with Pleasant Grove. And yeah. so, yeah, it's totally struck a chord with me. I was, I was born and raised in Dallas. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just that's, that's, that's it. Cool. I don't want to take up so much space, you know. You know men were always like, hey, is, that all, is all that space mine? And they were like, we answer the <laughs> question, yes. So. so, Danny, I don't know if Tamitha would mention this, but um, Tamitha is one of three friends I have who have been uh, getting cultural arts grants to do work with youth and, and non-youth in Pleasant Grove. So they're really making inroads there in a way that is so needed. So I applaud Tamitha for bringing that kind of work to a much That's needed great. Thing. Thanks. I really, I, Tabitha, like, like, I really love the, the, the phrase that you said about uh, white and Mexican. Say that again. Um, oh God, what, what you, um, um, the, the, um, the phrase about, um, of, of white and Mexican. Oh yeah. And that Both. is I, I think I, I like you said you said you had that somewhere, and I was wondering if you could like like expound on that a little bit because there's a lot of um, I guess like 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 new um, nuanced um, identities, and um, every, everyone's trying to I, I guess kind of like figure it out being so like dispersed uh, um, um, right. via organization and blah 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 blah. But um, could you like? What struck a chord when you heard that, that you want to use that phrase to 
Um, I, Tammy, do you know the theater um, conference that come, and I believe you were there, it was a theater conference that comes and uh, it was a, it was a, a the Nan National Performance Network? No. Was it National Performance Tonto? Network? Tonto? Tonto maybe? T-N-T-O? Or something like that? There, there was a, a, it was a one-man performance and I think he also danced and he was Jewish and Black. And he spoke a little bit about being both Jewish and Black. And when he said the words, he, he said, I used to say I was half, and now I say that I'm both. And when he said it, it was like this light went on for me. Huh. And I, I have this interesting family, like 10, my mom had eight brothers and sisters. My dad had 10 brothers and sisters. And they divorced young. And there, I didn't read a poem called Screen Door, but there was, there was, domestic violence. And so I didn't see my Mexican family for a while. But, um, you know, my white family is also Native American, but they can't really trace it back. So there's just this, um, also my white family, I have more, I, I mean, my white family has struggled more uh, financially. I have uncles who don't read. Um, they, they, both families had a hard time leaving each other. They're all a little tribal like they stay very close a lot, a lot of the families live together i lived with my like i was sleeping on a bean bag because i was sleeping on the back porch because my family was because my parents were living with my grandparents and so we're like eight other people not eight six other people i mean that was very common in my life up until fifth grade i think and so it's it's been really kind of hard for me to kind of uh, when i'm thinking about all the things that are going on in the world I see my uncles who've been incarcerated, my white uncles who've been incarcerated more highly than my Mexican family. And, you know, which some people, you know, would uh, make assumptions about certain things. And I'm like, they have uh, endured a lot more drug abuse and that kind of thing. So I, I'm always trying to kind of like, yeah. you know, I had to say to them white privilege and they're like, yeah, well, I don't see it. And I'm like, yeah, well, you've gone to jail and you're still alive. That if that's the only privilege you have, you are still alive. Yeah. And um, they still don't necessarily receive that from me. But. <laughs> nice, nice combo. Um, we're gonna move on because we have uh, our fourth and final poet to present, and in her featured their their featured performance. So Ching and Chen, you ready to turn on your mic? Yeah. Uh, Can you hear me? I can. How about others? Okay, it seems like yes. Okay. Yeah. You're, are you in Washington State? You're I am. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you feeling pretty good there, hunkered down during the pandemic? Because I know we've been hearing a lot in the news about Washington, Seattle in particular. Yeah, it's been a strange journey um i mean i think it was very nerve-wracking because um we were kind of the, the the beginning um but now i think it's um our our i think a lot of folks have taken the um what's happening seriously and the our rate of growth is is not as um fast as other places so that's i guess that's hopeful. How long have you been sheltering in place? Um, actually, our governor didn't put um, that. I think he's calling it safer at home. Mm. We, we got it really late, but um, I think um, I think I think a lot of folks have been working from home for longer than that, and um, and. I have been working from home since I think March 9th, the week of March 9th. So it's like slow, gradual steps. So, yeah. I went to the AWP in San Antonio. And mm -hmm. when I came back, it, it was almost canceled, but not canceled. So um, I was keeping my distance and pra practicing pretty good protocols, I think. But when I came back, I self-isolated from that point on, right around March 8th. So I've been low key alone since that time. And um, I'm almost afraid of how I'm not gonna like being out when I finally get out, but I'll get to that parade later. 
Do you want to tell us uh, about what you're working on now and launch into your reading? Sure. Uh, so I, um, I lived in Houston until and I moved to Seattle over the summer um, for a new job. And um, I was working on the series, um, which is actually uh, responding to um, life like after Hurricane Harvey. And um, I, I, I have severe asthma, so I was thinking about breathing um, as a unit and meditation, but also, you know, like difficulty breathing after the after the hurricane and um, um, in terms of like the chemicals that were released into the air and mold and, and et cetera. Um, so I didn't know how that would change when I moved here, but I'm still working on something around breathing. Mm. So I think um, what I thought I would share with you all are some pieces that are out of that that time period is I've been thinking a lot about neighbors and um, strangers and um, kind of like small everyday kindnesses, um, which I experienced then. Cause I, I mean, this whole experience really made me think of that time, you know, when we were like going out and buying food and like storing up and not knowing what was happening next. And I feel like that felt very similar to me here. So, Okay, so um, I'm gonna read, um, I'm gonna share this piece called Lantern Letter, which is written in this um, Japanese hybrid form called the Zuihitsu. Um, what I really love about the form, so it's kind of like between an essay and a poem, and it really uh, follows, it, it, it follows like kind of like your random thoughts, but, it, but um, in, in, this, um, in this form, and it really cares about comparing different experiences um, and recording that. So, um, so this, this piece is called Lantern Letter, as you get to. Um, and I, there are two places where I'm borrowing words from Alexis Pauline Gum's M Archive, After the End of the World, which I really recommend as a book. So, and I'll just go like this when, when it's Alexis's words. My people, I see you across street porch people huddled under brook arcway watching what pours from sky wading in water what circuits it carries mostly numb small what might feel like circuits end stay home watch streets filling up and draining and filling up again my neighbor with no shoes and an umbrella knock on doors to locate whose car in the street flooding up he knocked on our door and another one fleeting back knocked a few minutes before and said, hi, I'm your neighbor. We miss what's been paved over, all branches holding down our dirt, keeping paths flowing away. A lake and library parking lot, women calling to each other over and above it, heading to their free computer classes. My people of the flashing lights, pulsating throbs, carbon monoxide, methane, oxides of nitrogen, Cousins released 180,565 up into stream, 287,453 emissions. These are among us too, carried into our stories. If we would have only sung to find each other or taught ourselves to read the waves. If only grown resistant skin, hard fired to stand through ravenous beetles, stripping off all trees, 33 trillion gallons. What slugs, what acoustic activities swallowed and sat, stared down with glass eyes. Vow to share our four teaspoons of coffee. Open back door at your knock, lend the orange cords, handheld pumps, small towels to slick off oil anomalies. Watch for rising sheen and horizon, melting glacier, to remember its full and terrible man-eating weight, to walk through rain down boulders, singing lines of poetry to the bears, announcing, hey, hey, we are here, don't worry, nothing to see, nothing to eat. If I see you coming, I vow to slow down, walk step beside you, not leave you waiting through sluck, not leave you stack chairs high for rescue. Hundreds climb silent up the highways, looking for more silence. I'm done with fleeing, even as you walk beside me, 
I feared your ever growing. Hold on, sorry. Got it. I feared your ever growing branches would wild out my own tin. I kept saying thank you. Nice to pass and cross and leave taking. You waited for me, the only two large clumsies under a finally darkening midnight sky, saying hello again, hello. I vow an impossible hello. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to read that piece because I've been thinking about a lot of those, um, you know, like those shared moments where you're asking for help from, from your neighbor or from a stranger and how some of those things in that piece can't happen right now in that way. So just, I'm just thinking about those kinds of connections. Um, so um, I want to read you. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, somebody asked about the form that you referenced, the Japanese form. Uh, can you, can you, yeah. I'll type it if you tell me how to type it, how to spell it. Um, it's Z U I H I T S E R. Can you uh, hear me? Or did it? Yeah, there was a, uh, yeah, Z U. Z U I H T S U. Uh, Joshua, could you uh, mute your mic? Do you mind? Awesome. Okay, sorry, um, Chien. It's Z U I A H I T S U. Z U Z U I H I T S U. Zuihitsu. Okay. And um, if you're interested in the form, um, Kamiko Han is a poet who writes a lot in English in in that form. Um, so um, I thought I would share with you. Um, so I, I've been write, I've been really obsessed with that form for a long time. Um, I've also been writing spells, like like spells like hopes. Um, so I thought I would read you um, a spell, and then um, and then one of the ways that I've been surviving and like and like you know dealing and like struggling and trying to contain my anxiety and like just just be okay with what's what's happening right now um you know maintaining is um i've been going to um meditations like online meditations mm -hmm. um, and one of the practices that i've been introduced to is um the meditation poem it's called agatha um and that's um that's in um the plum blossom tradition and it's focused on breathing so Wait, I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm called called the what it's called Agatha. I will, I'll, I'll put it in for you. G A T. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna read you Spell for Safe Passage. Spell for Safe Passage. For you who heard useless through the honey trees in time of wasp and stalk. For you who raised surface generated an off-color milk. We all mixed from hunger, born from chemical cousins. For the train of mouths breathing a first bowl, you who haven't sat down for days waiting for fog and spice sky. I watch you weave bare grassy cane, tired body in shift and glitter, will not wash out no matter how we found red into whatever we wore, me stolen a sheen of milk memory, saw alone on the porch, to sleep and take up a branch of that country, to allow maps of fire, our own fields of rain. Mm. I just had a thought, Jen, yeah. if you ever want to uh, invite us to a um, online uh, little lecture on Gotha, the Gotha form. You might get some takers. Oh, that, okay. I'll have to do more, uh, I'll, I'll have to do more um, get, gathering, but yes, I, I would love to, uh, maybe not a lecture, maybe we could do like a, a writing session together where we write them together and breathe. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'll just end with this um, Gatha. Um, I actually have been doing a lot of um, things where I'll, I'll write um, in like one, one day um, and then the next day I'll write something else and then I'll merge them together. So this is a merged, this is merged Gatha. Uh, Gatha for forest walk when no father arrives. 
Breathing in, notice to light a fire in classic wall. Breeze and sun in forest. Breathing out, name what I see in circle. To open up a tear in membrane. Breathing in, see, you do not need a velvet stomach. What's in motion? You do not need a taut line. Breathing out, the water has transformed. Don't get stuck in cradle. Don't get lost along green. Everything I pass, if you don't consider yourself same language, breathing in repetitions, yet ask for that same patrol and variations in the leaves, yet desire that same protection. Breathing out, can see where, then combine my memory, shape the bone, ask the half shut question, we belong to each other. Thanks for listening. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, I feel so fed. I, I've been eating a lot, cooking and stuff, and this is a different kind of nurturing that I need, and I'm glad that we're here together to maybe benefit in a different way. Thank you so much, Ching and Chen. That's just really, really great. Thank you. Well, thank you for, for gathering us all together. We wouldn't be here without your invitation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me just remind folks that um, we are, uh, I'm going to be hosting uh, every Saturday for the next, well, through the month of April. So uh, I've got one more, I mean, not one, but three more events to go. Um, so uh, feel free to join up to listen or um, uh, support and promote. Um, also, if you want to take a look at my little sign. It felt so good to not do this digitally. My fingers were happy to do something different. Uh, I miss drawing. I need to draw um, and paint. But anyway, O oh Miami is a, the name of an annual poetry festival in Miami. And all of their programming this month is free online. And they've got some really great scheduled readings, teach-ins. They even have a poetry workshop for children in French. Uh, so uh, check them out. I, I'm promoting them. I have no vested interest. I'm not part of it, but you know, it's just more resources I like to share. Um, so I'm gonna invite you to say, make some final comments. Danny, if you want to do your improv piece, do you have that one ready? I, to well, I, I could try it. I mean, if everybody's willing and. Um, I'm sorry, the the person who just read, and I'm, I don't know your name. Um, can you say it again? I'm Chingy. Chingy. Uh, it's like with a C-H-I-N-G-Y. That's how you say it. Chingy, C-H-I-N-G-Y. Mm -hmm. I think I got it. I asked everyone for two words earlier. Uh, so if, if you want to give me two words, uh, Chingy, that would be great. Uh, to try to use it in improvisation. I gave you purple, but I'm, I will add. I will add carrot. Oh, you did give me purple. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was you. I never saw your image. Me. Oh, okay, great. So I do. That's the very first word on the list. And carrot. Okay. Um, Danny, somebody yes. just um, Gwen, who's been watching and listening, um, contributes two words. She uh, yes. typed in the chat. Peace, like. Peace and love, peace, and okay. and then the second word is brew, brew, like in brew coffee. Okay, very good. Go for it. All right. We are a kitchen in the middle of the night. We are twilight. We are two words, four words, six words, words that fall like rain. All of us gathered here for this dream of tortillas de maiz, which evolved into cornbread, frijoles, beans with ham hocks or chorizo, tortillas harina. We inhale dreams by the lungful and give back pomegranate wine 
the dreams of brown boys, pulsating frogs. We are tangential, corporeal. We are twilight. We are carrots waiting in the earth for strong brown fingers to find them. We are all the dreams that you ever had that could traverse all these rivers and all these winds up these mountains and to come here, to come here, to know this sweet history, all this cosmic understanding that ravels in the space of a molcajete, lava rock, mortar and pestle, sitting on the table of a grandmother's kitchen. This is what we waited for. This is the peace we sought. And we can use our dreams to brew beer or coffee or tea. It will be a long time before we understand all the gifts that the twilight gives. Thank you. I feel like I feel like the maraca is a blessing, right? If I get the maraca, yeah. the spirits are okay. <laughs> that was well done, Daddy. Well, well done. Well, you know, it's improv's really hit or miss. I mean, uh, I feel like I take a lot of swings. I don't know how many hits I get, but you know, um, uh, Tamita, I wanted to mention something about you were talking about being uh, white and being Mexican, and and when you. You said that you asked Tammy at a reading, what kind of Mexican are you? And I immediately thought of all those conversations like real and not so friendly, but also really friendly that I've had and watched over the years. But it reminded me of a poem by a, a poet named Gregorio Gomez from Chicago. If any of you know Gregorio, I don't know if you know him, Tammy, mm -mm. but uh, he's, he's just a wonderful poet and a really sweet guy and very funny. He has a poem where he talks about who is the real Mexican. And, and it, it starts out something like this. Only I am the real Mexican, Mexicano, 100% Mexicano in la sangre. The rest of you so-called Mexicans are 80% Mexican, 10% black, 5% white, and 5% other. And then he just goes from there. And it's, it's a parody of the whole idea, like who is a real Mexican and who is not, right? It's just complete satire. And mm -hmm. I love it. Anyway, I thought I'd just share that idea. Thank I you. I took the census today, and, and we're starting to grow up a little bit as, an, um, you know, as a bureaucratically defined people. And the census has it broken down now. It used to be just like one or two boxes on there. And now you could break it down and, and um, more, you could say more about how, who all the parts of you are on there, you know? I mean, it doesn't have boxes for soul and love and I am this food and I am that song or anything like that, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> you have to I write. <laughs> hey Tammy, you haven't done a poem yet. I, that's not my intention with the series. <laughs> At least one. Um, well, does anybody have a, a last minute comment to make? Because I want to make sure that if anybody has been muted up to now and wants to say a hello or a shout out um, or a special thanks for our poets. How about a, I'm going to unmute us so we can all applaud the four poets. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Good time. Good time. Bravo. I just want to thank you all for coming. Am I the only person who's like an audience member that is that actually saying anything, contributing? Um, um, say thank you for sharing your story. I, I feel honored and blessed. Um, um, and and um, and I will stop y'all all. all. In the next couple of days. <laughs> By you, especially you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've written some notes. Um, thing. Um, thank you, Tammy, for inviting me and um, let, letting me be the fly on the wall. Oh, more than that. More than that, for sure. Um, Danny, if you uh, feel like it, could you share that new poem, the, the, 
the one you just pieced together if you want on the uh, Facebook event page if you feel like it'd be great to it'd be great great to read it again to, to well, read it. that you know I well to I get it I don't know if I could post it. I didn't write it down. It just I just reeled it off. Oh it's, it's, wow. <laughs> well, it's recorded, so I'm good. We're good. Okay, see now I want to go back to write something like really good if I can, if that's possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I got so many wonderful ideas uh, from from listening to you all read. What a wonderful bunch of readers and thank you so much for your work. And great audience too. Yeah. Yay. So, I was having a rough day. This made me really happy. <laughs> oh, great. Sending hugs. Thanks. Hugs. 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 Hug. <laughs> hug you. Hug you. Donna, I'm hugging you. Gwen. I'm Donna. hugging the... I'm liking your hair. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, when you're ready, Y'all are ready to sign off. Uh, you can just uh, click on the leave meeting and uh, thank you so much. I'll follow up with you, uh, the four poets, about um, the recorded um, document and where that needs to go or could go. And love your energy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, poet. Good night, everybody. Y'all be, be safe. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Lily. Bye, bye, Danny. Bye, bye. Tamitha, thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Good night. Night, night.